Hello, I'm Allison Roman, and welcome to Solicited Advice, the podcast where I get to do what I love most, give advice. Each week, I'm joined by a very special guest and several very special advice seekers as we do our best to solve all of, or at least one of, your problems. Today, I have the privilege of co-hosting with a dear friend of mine who is also just an absolute blast, even if you don't know her, I imagine. Uh, it is actor Helena York, everybody. Uh, round of applause in the studio. Um, Helena, you may know her from uh, her iconic role as Brooke Dubeck on The Other Two, which uh, I admitted to her the other day that I watched the final episode of and wept earnestly. Um, so, so that sweet. was an interesting thing to share with somebody that you know in person. Um, we saw the Barbie movie together. Uh, I'm trying to think of like what else. What we other wept at that. I can mention. Um, we met in a Soul Cycle class, which is incredible, incredible <laughs> fact. Um, but you, you are more than Brooke, and you are more than Broadway, and you are more than Barbie companion to me. Um, and I'm just really grateful that you're here. And thank you for doing this with me. I'm so honored to be here. I, I feel like you, that's very sweet of you to say that, that you said that to me, but um, it was very embarrassing when we met at the Soul Cycle class because I turned around after presenting my ass to you for 45 minutes and realized that Alison Roman was sitting behind me. And I was like, just blank faced, Alison Roman. <laughs> and you're like, that is who I am. <laughs> we were it was very like funny. the most like, epic celeb sighting. Yeah, well, I felt that way as well, but it was like pandemic era. Soul Cycle, which was outside in the winter time, yeah. so like everybody's sweating and also simultaneously freezing, and we're in a, a tiny tent. It was very. That's bizarre. how desperate you and I were to continue to be white and basic during the yeah. pandemic. We were like, Nothing we will, will take us. Soul Cycle in thirty-six <laughs> degree temperatures in downtown yeah. Brooklyn. And you know what? I miss that. I wouldn't. I'm not trying to trade the other experiences of the pandemic, but I did like the working out outside. I'm not gonna lie. I like. Oh, I don't know. It was like a real burn on the lungs, like yeah. sucking in all that cold air. That was yeah. really intense. It made me feel alive. I felt like my body was was doing the work, if you will. You know, it was like <laughs> sure. firing on all cylinders. It's like we gotta stay warm. We got we gotta stay cold. We gotta cool down. We gotta warm up. It was it was everything at the same time, and I missed that. I missed the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And then we I went to Rukla on our people. first date. Oh my Wasn't god. That sweet? I, I literally would read your books and I was like all of the intros and your even your recipes, the little things in your recipes. And I was like, this person should be my friend. Like, why are we not friends? Doesn't she live near here? I can see that she's at my vegetable stand. You're like, I'm going to go to books. every soul cycle class and find out where she Until is. Until I run into her. Yeah, it yeah. was. Um, and then I manifested you and then there you were. And then also you invited me to your ham party and I was at work and I spent the entire day just making sure everybody knew I was invited to Alison Roman's ham party. Yeah. And if you're not familiar my, as a listener, I do a iconic yearly ham party. I, I was thinking, I was like, I don't know if I can do one this year, if I have like the bandwidth. Why? Um, just like the other things going on, you know, but it's, I, I, I may, but it is like a nice excuse to invite people to a big party for the first time if you're interested in becoming friends with them. I feel like for a, yeah. like we were sort of, we had gone out to lunch once, but we were sort of, we were still getting to know each other. And I think it, like it's very low stakes to say, come to my big party. And like, yeah, that feels like a good, a good way to like enter into a friendship. Be, making adult it, friends is hard. <laughs> I totally hard. agree because you're sort of like, I don't want to come on too strong. I don't want them to think yeah. that I'm like a weird stalker. Like I definitely, I worked with somebody that I came on very strong to and I realized within it, I was like, oh, she's not interested. Yeah. And I had to back away and I was like, okay. And it yeah. is like dating. <laughs> yeah. It does suck. If friendship rejection is not easier than romantic rejection. I will say. I don't know if I would have survived being rejected by you. I'm really glad that I haven't. I mean, still <laughs> no. remains to be seen. <laughs> no, no, no. You're in. We're 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 solidified. I've been it's you've been to the ham party. It's like I feel like that's such a thing that is not talked about enough. Is like if you meet a, another if a, if a woman meets another woman that she's interested in being friendly with, how yeah. do you go down that path? And it's, it's like especially at our age, you're like a little bit, you sort of feel like, oh, I've made all the friends I could possibly have. And then yeah. you meet a new one. You really one, do like, have what? to throw a ham party to make it work. But <laughs> that's what know, they we say. Persevere. <laughs> we persevere. Um, I haven't seen if you expect like what has been, what has been going on or not going on or how you, I saw some beautiful photos of you and your gorgeous one-year-old son. Well, Allison, I don't know if you know, or if your listeners know, there is a 
world ending SAG strike right now, which means there's heard. absolutely nothing going on. Um, it's really crazy to just not get emails. <laughs> like mm. nobody emails me about anything. I don't have anything to email people about. I think that's and a lot of anything, people's fantasy. Like a day and I'm living, emails. I'm living the fantasy. You yeah. Are. And I, yeah. and I, it's so funny because I think that there's this perception that it's like, oh yeah, we're just starve them out. And I'm like, baby, I have starved before. <laughs> we have <laughs> been down this road. You're like I am an actor. I yeah. started from the bottom and now I am here. <laughs> At the bottom again. And that's fine. (laughs) That's true. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we're uniquely suited to dealing with unemployment and getting creative with our time and our money and all of that. So, yeah, I went to Canada where I grew up going on a lake in Manitoba. And it is so remote with no emails and, you know, no babysitters and whatever. And I just hung out with my son for two weeks. And it was you just put bliss. him put him in the for, in the Adirondack chair and yeah, said, my go, parents you know? got yeah, my parents got him a miniature Adirondack chair. We got this like used bike seat where it's but he's between the seat and the handlebars. And he, I felt like a kangaroo riding around with my like little baby in his seat. And, <laughs> You know, people don't want to hear about babies, but he's pretty terrific. And he's pretty delicious looking. Amazing. I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's fine to hear about babies. I think there's a difference. Yeah. You, you like understand the when a line has been crossed and how you talk about it. You're doing great. Also, most importantly, my mother cooked like an insane amount for us and um, made your zucchini tart. I which... saw that. Her oven's fucked up, and so it got a little runny, but it was still delicious, the, like, egg zucchini situation. Yeah. And then I also made my favorite from dining in, your roasted cauliflower, which does not, with dates, which does not have an accompanying photograph. It doesn't, which is a mistake. I can't remember what you said. Not that it's a mistake. It's just that not every photo, not every recipe can get a photo. But what I learned is that, like, most people, instead of having 130 recipes and 100 photos, would simply prefer 100 photos and 100 recipes. You know what I mean? Well, because a lot of people are, yes. And I think most people are intimidated to do the recipes without the photo. Yeah. Because they're sort of like, how am I supposed to know what the final result is going to look like? And the reason I did the cauliflower is that my husband was like, I want cauliflower. And I was like, well, let's see if this bitch got a cauliflower recipe. <laughs> and you, know and she does. you did. And I made it. And it, it and it's an incredible recipe. <laughs> That's a hilarious request, by the way. He just, I don't know. Maybe like we cauliflower. had a cauliflower. Like, Babe, wake up. I want cauliflower tonight. He, he, yeah, he does that. He's like, what about Brussels sprouts? I'm like, don't make me do that. I feel like <laughs> you don't do honestly, a Brussels sprout. No, you do. Wait, do you? I, I do. I have. I have. Not in any of the books, though, to be honest, because they're no, not. No. I, I, I know. Come from, I come from, like, the New York in the eras of, like, 2000. 13 to 2000 now or whatever and Mm -hmm. there were a lot of like fried brussels sprouts with like fish sauce and herbs and chili and like everybody had it and it's like it's like buffalo brussels sprout i'm like no it's not i sort of Mm -hmm. became brussels sprout fatigued but they don't bother me like it's an enjoyable vegetable but i it is not something that i seek out like i'd rather have a cabbage i'd rather have a kale i'd Mm -hmm. rather have a cauliflower i'd rather have pretty much anything else in the brassica family don't get me started on 2019 or whatever when they started roasting the, the whole brussels sprouts on the stock and like presenting them to you table side what like a, you're where a did they do that barbecue restaurant oh i don't my know god a restaurant you don't want to have to work like, for a brussels I'm sprout like, don't. like yeah you they're don't, already don't get the work. knife involved i don't want yeah. the knife involved in my brussels sprout they're like did you know i want to serve it right on the stock i'm like i will oh, not brother. be doing that i won't be doing that <laughs> Um, but I like that Barry gives you direction. I would like kind of kill for dinner direction because not, not to, not to brag, but I can do anything. <laughs> and um, so I, I do, do know this, <laughs> <laughs> but I sort of feel like because I can do anything and I live in a place where I can get anything, I'm sort of like mm-hmm. a rudderless boat without a sail or whatever that expression is. And I'm sure I occasionally would really enjoy a full-on request like can you make this thing I, like I would love nothing more so next time we have dinner consider that think about it oh my god well I did invite you for dinner and I made um I was gonna do a lamb shoulder and I asked if you had a, any advice and and well I should say I was gonna do a recipe but then I was insecure that you were gonna be eating the recipe and I asked what you thought and then you were like here's an unpublished 
lamb shoulder recipe and you texted it to me. And I also bragged about that to many, many people. I was like, I got a text message <laughs> recipe from this Allison is Roman. This not published. And in the recipe, you said to do this lamb in a, the Dutch oven for 10 hours. Yeah. And I went to Prospect Butcher where he was like, 10 hours. He's like, I don't know. I've never heard of that. Five max, right, whatever. Baby. Never However, heard of that. However, in this recipe calls for an entire bottle of Pinot Grigio, which never heard of that either. To... Have you butcher man? Yeah, exactly. Man. Yeah. I was like, it was a man, wasn't it? Because you're like, the butcher said, I was like, was it a man? And you were like, it was. I was like, <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah. Which means he knows absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. And I was like, I was really torn. He said four. You were saying 10. I did five. You came over. You were like, how long did you do it? I said five. And you were so disappointed in me. <laughs> you were like, well, I think it's because I'm like. I'm like, trust the process. And just before anybody yes. is outraged, it's 10 hours at like 225. It's a very low temperature with the lid very on low. in the oven. Like, And there's plenty of juice to be yeah. absorbed. I'll also and say. It really I does, hope you I release like, this, up, this recipe. I, it's I hope pretty to. Magical. Yeah, it, was, it, it wasn't that I was outraged that you didn't do that. It's that I feel like I run into this issue a lot where re with recipes where I'm like, take the whole lemon, take all the seeds out, finally chop it. And people are like, the whole lemon? And I'm like, oh yeah. And I'm like, God. well, I only did the pulp because surely you couldn't have meant that. And I was like, it is not a typo. And I, you know, I had a pretty good track record of no typos. And then the lemon shortbread came out and I had a typo. And so I, I don't really have a leg to stand on. With well, you do that, that with your chicken lemon dates I and do. you do a full lemon and a full onion that you don't peel off the. That's right. I don't peel the skin. Focaccia from. Free yourself from peeling the skin off the onion. Um, but anyway, it's it's sort of like people are like. I'm like, trust the process. Like I, I want, and I think that I try, and typically a recipe that I would give you would have like a big head note and I would say like, here's why it's so long because I'm already flagging that people are going to be concerned by the long cook time. And I could say mm -hmm. like at minimum eight, but if you mm -hmm. can do 10, do 10. If it's But 12, you stupidly it's trusted in our, in our new love affair that I would just blindly trust the 10 hours. Yeah, which is really arrogant You're like, of me, she actually. won't need it. <laughs> I didn't give her the head note because there wasn't one. Um, but I'm always, I'm always here for the, what can I, what should I cook for dinner? Because it's not me. And I can, especially if you're like, I'm making lamb. I'm like, well, that's a direction that I can work with. So, you know, oh. I'm always here for that and here to steamroll you and replace whatever recipe you came up with, with something that I, I wrote. I don't know. I feel like that's sort of like having rude. a friend who's I'm a masseuse, so having a friend who's a masseuse and like asking for massages. I don't think I would bug you. Like, what should I make for dinner? Every yeah, five that's seconds. true. Don't do it every five seconds, but occasionally, especially when you're having people over, I, I really live for that. I hope, oh, okay. I think some of these questions, like it's tough on this show to do like, what should I make for dinner tonight? Cause I don't know you. I don't know where you're coming from. In a dream world, <laughs> I get, I get a job. I get to like be a member of the Park Slope food co-op and instead of like unboxing things, which I would also enjoy, but my dream job is to just stand in the aisles and people say, what's a kohlrabi? And I tell them and I tell them how to cook with it. Or they're like, I'm bored of chicken thighs. I'm like, well, when's the last time you had a chicken breast? You know, and I get to guide people through like that would be my job so that I could be a member there. If I By lived closer, way, I would probably pursue that. But anyway. I was going to say like, you should pitch that to them. They'd be so lucky mm -hmm. to have you doing that. Like that's the volunteer. Yeah. You're like, instead of bringing groceries to people's cars, I'll be Alison Roman in the aisles. <laughs> yeah. I want to give real time advice. Um, which brings oh, me to that. bring uh, real time advice now with a caller, which is so exciting. And I don't know what the question is, and neither do you. And this is a thrill. Okay, so it is time for our first caller, uh, Mara. Hello, welcome to the show. Hi, didn't know I was the first. So exciting. Yes, <laughs> the first today. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we have done this before, but it's, okay. you know, each time I realize is the first time. It doesn't matter if you've done it before because each question is so different. Yeah, so I didn't expect any of this. I think I filled out a question form like half asleep on my phone. So this is great. Great. Well, you never know what happens when you do that. I when yeah. when I'm <laughs> with my phone half asleep, a bunch of packages from Etsy arrive in like three to six weeks. That's what happens. Oh yeah. But you get to be on this podcast. Okay. So what's your question? So um, yeah. So I love entertaining. It's like one of my favorite things to do. I tell my friends like when I, I realize now that when I was a child, what I wanted to be when I grew up is just somebody who has dinner parties. Um, mm -hmm. 
But I don't feel like my hosting and cooking is always reciprocated by my circle. Like, so I wanted to know if you ever felt that way where it's like you want somebody to host for you the way you like prepare a meal for other people. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That is topical for me. Um, Helena, do you have any opening thoughts? I have so many opening thoughts. That's very topical for me as well. It's, I'm so glad you asked that question, Mara, because I asked that question myself of my own friend group. Um, this is not to put shade on anybody, but it's it's almost like, don't you remember, like our parents used to host dinner parties all the time and, mm-hmm. you know, and any Nora Ephron movie, they're like hosting dinner parties or, you know... And it's sort of like something that has left our, I don't know, left the zeitgeist or something that people don't have people over. You always go out to eat. It's like doesn't happen, especially in New York. Mm -hmm. Do you live in New York, Mara? Yeah, I'm in Jersey City. Yeah. And so we've had here, my husband and I, a couple dinner parties. And you're like, it's so fun to be in your own house and in your own environment. And not a lot of people reciprocate. Me too. Yeah, Yeah. I don't know. Actually. And then I find too that like you can't get people out of your house because people love the environment so much. And hey, brag! Your house is really nice. We get no. <laughs> I is mean, really- listen. I was at your ham party, and nobody left that either. There were like a hundred people there drinking free martinis. They you went free. to um, a ham party. Wow. It was my ham well, party. Allison famously yes. has a holiday yeah. ham party that Mara. I don't want to brag. Free. I what was invited about? to. Yeah. Yeah. That's and- a serious brag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is the flex of my holiday season. <laughs> I feel I feel like the like desire to host and like comes before the desire for it to be reciprocated. And I say that this is topical mm. for me is because mm. I was actually just talking about this with my therapist where I was like, I just want to be taken care of where like I yeah. grew up feeling very capable and independent uh, for reasons that we can talk about on another podcast. <laughs> um, but I I definitely like fortified myself with being like I'm gonna do it myself and I'm gonna host and I'm gonna cook for people and I'm gonna take care of people and as I got older it was sort of like okay I'm gonna take care of people the way that I want to be taken care of and but my desire to host outweighs my desire to let other people do it for me if that makes sense yeah and I was like I I don't know your situation is but I also feel like for me it's a little specific in that to Helena's earlier point you weren't on the call but she was saying how she was having people over and I was one of those people. And she was like, I have to cook for Allison. Like, I don't want to ask her for advice. I'm like feeling weird about the thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people are like, do I have to cook your recipes if you're coming over? And I'm like, no, I will judge you if you don't, but no, absolutely not. (laughs) And, but like, I, I like things so specifically that it brings me more pleasure to like have the people over and all I think it evolved into being like, I don't need you to do it for me, but I do need you to contribute equally. And the equally can be helping, you know, clear the table, put the dishes in the dishwasher or wash them by hand or go get the ice or bring all the wine. Like now I'm sort of getting better at delegating because I realized that like, I was like, am I feeling resentful for like always being the one to host and always being the one to invite that now when people say, what can I bring? I say, you, I'm not, you know, you bring all the wine or like you bring the Mm -hmm. this or I need the that. Like, and people do want to help. I think they just don't always know how. And if it's not as like innate in them to help or to cook, especially if they don't cook, like do your friends cook themselves? Some of them do. I mean, I just turned 29. So I think my friend group is still aging into the dinner party territory. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. That's my hope. Um, And I will give a shout out to my boyfriend who is number one dishwasher um and also a big fan of the other two he was the most excited (laughs) for me to be here same (laughs) that's sweet but yeah I think like if they can't contribute in the food way I think that Mm -hmm. they shouldn't you shouldn't ever like feel like why can't they do that for me because they don't they don't want to and they probably can't and you probably wouldn't enjoy it that much if they did it would be a mess it probably wouldn't taste that good it's like "Mm." but like if you're like okay what do they like to do like okay you're in charge of music you're in charge of picking out wine. You're in charge of cleaning. I think you can involve people, like meet them where they're at. And it's like, if you're like, you do the music, you do the dishes, mm-hmm. you do the wine, you're involving people. And by them taking on some of the labor, like however you want to define that, will make you feel more taken care of. Mm-hmm. Like, 
Hosting doesn't have to mean you're doing 100% of the things. Yeah. Can I also just add, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, in like, oh, I was just going to say in like preparing for this, I was talking to my coworker, Gabby, and we're in like marketing and events. So it is like on some level you do this professionally. And I was like, do you like get annoyed when you go on trips with your friends and you do the entire itinerary? And she's like, no, I like being in control. So I'm trying to like take that up and be like, yeah, probably if somebody else cooked this, it wouldn't be exactly yeah, how I like it. I feel like, like the three so. of us are the same person. Yeah. That takes like also like, yeah. I'll take that. That's compliment. like takes a lot of time. Like, time and effort to admit I'm glad I'm happy for you that you got there by 29 um seriously I am proud of you <laughs> I'm literally listening to Mara like this is therapy I'm where I'm there. like almost 10 years older than you and I needed to hear this <laughs> I know I'm like I'm like okay now you're the host actually um yeah I I think that that's that's the the TLDR is um acknowledging that other people don't have your strengths and like figuring out other ways to feel taken care of. But also just even admitting that you want to be taken care of, I think is a huge step and like not something that I figured out until like much mm. later in life. <laughs> but yeah, is there anything else that we can help you with today, Mara? No, I think, I think this was great. A dream come true. Uh, very validating, which is not what I came here for. And <laughs> yeah, thank you both so much. You're well, I guess my, sorry, one, one closing thought is that I don't want you to ever feel deterred from hosting because hosting often is a thankless act and caring yeah. for other people can sometimes be a thankless act, but that's not why we do it, you know? And, it, and it's okay to be frustrated and it's okay to feel like I wish somebody were to do this for me, but like ultimately people who have that desire to like cook for others and care for others and do that, it's like, if we don't do it, we'll die. So we got to keep doing it and uh, re regardless of how it's reci like reciprocated or not, so. Yeah, I was never like, no more parties will be thrown here. Okay, good. So. Maybe that was just me. I'm like, no more ham parties until someone throws me a ham party, which is not true. I'll throw you a ham party this okay. year. All right. There you go. Um, Challenge right. accepted. Great. I'll well, throw you a so ham much, party Mara. for my friends, and they will be grateful. You should. You should do that. And people will be blown away, and then they'll feel so guilty that they never did that for you. So I'll delegate better this time. Oh. Good. Have them bring all the mustard. That takes a real load off. Um, <laughs> thank sure. you so much, Mara. Thanks yeah, for joining. Thank you all. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. You too. This episode of Solicited Advice is presented by Maker's Mark. If you're a fan of my YouTube series, Home Movies, you probably know that we took a little field trip to the Maker's Mark Distillery in Loretto, Kentucky earlier this year, where we honestly just learned so much. Something that really inspired me was the story about how Maker's Mark was originally created by the extremely impressive duo, Bill and Margie Samuels. Bill had a perfectly fine bourbon recipe that was passed down to him, family to family, but Bill, a man after my own heart, decided that perfectly fine would simply not do. So he burned that 170-year-old recipe, literally, in pursuit of a newer, better version. And that version is still the Maker's Mark we know and love today, made with that classic soft winter wheat to achieve that smooth finish. And I can relate. When I'm creating recipes, my Virgo placement would honestly never settle for something that's perfectly fine. I only settle for perfection, even if that means burning it. Not literally, but you get it. It's safe to say that Bill and Margie nailed the perfect recipe with Maker's Mark, designed to stand the test of time. So next time you're out, grab a bottle of Maker's Mark and cheers to them. Cheers to yourself. And cheers to burning things in the pursuit of something better. Cheers. Maker's Mark makes their bourbon carefully, so please enjoy it that way. Maker's Mark Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 45% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2023, Maker's Mark Distillery Incorporated, Loretto, Kentucky. I feel like I would wanted to do this podcast so I can like espouse some sort of wisdom. And then I feel like every time I'm always like, oh, you're so much more evolved than I was at that age. I'm like, ah, oh, you've already figured this out. I see. So you don't need my advice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's always really upsetting when somebody who's 29 and like born in the nineties is smarter than you. <laughs> I know. I'm like, wow, our parents really did a number on us. Uh, no, I'm just I kidding. also, it's interesting um, what you said great. too, about like hosting being this like sometimes thankless act. I love it because I, I love the control. I like having the control and oh, yeah. b being accepting of that part of yourself is so challenging because it means you're like 
you're letting other people off the hook and then you sort of self-judge yourself. You're like, oh my God, I should really expect more from people. But if you like doing it, then it's yeah. like I'm going to Paris next week and I made all the reservations because I was like, I don't trust my husband no, to gross. pick what I eat. Like, <laughs> no. get out of here. He doesn't eat dairy. No. He, he eats no milk. Like, He's going to have I, a horrible time him. there. He doesn't eat dairy. He's in for a rude awakening. I'm getting him I some lactate. You, I'm going to be like, I don't ask. Don't be like, oh, sans lait. I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah. Don't embarrass me. Not in Paris, Barry. Barry. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. The world's problem solved. Who? What else you got? I know. I haven't, I haven't even had any coffee today. And I feel like so energized by this. And it, it's like, there's something, I don't know. I also just like talking to strangers. It's like feels fun it's like yeah it's it's a part of your extroverted nature that it's also yeah. you're a confident person like you know I'm what the not. fuck is up i am I not know, a confident but I, person I know you, you know that, that i'm not i know that but it's just insane to me because you even said to me you were like hey um thanks for doing my podcast i have a podcast <laughs> who am i i'm like who are you you're our I ina <laughs> i have podcast imposter syndrome i'm like does the world need That's another insane. podcast what what the am I contributing? More and I was like, at all times. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I was like, you know what? I know why the world needs another podcast. We can answer questions like our next caller. Up next, we have Chad. Hi, Chad. Hi, everyone. How are you? Hi, Chad. Hey, how are you? So excited to meet both of you. I'm huge, uh, huge fan of both of yours. Okay, Chad. We are ready to answer your question and solve all your problems. <laughs> so how, how can we help Wonderful. you today? Uh, how long do we have? <laughs> Um, forever. <laughs> well, so my main question uh, that I had, uh, so over the last years, beginning, you know, in January, I've really tried to make a bigger effort in like being a better person. So I got mm. sober, started working out, uh, moved, you know, back to the city, got a promotion, all these really exciting things. And I've been single through the whole thing. And now I think mm. I'm ready to like get back out there and I'm still a little like bringing insecurities and things that I thought that I've like dealt with over the past year. And now I'm going on dates and I'm like, I'm still super insecure about like my teeth and my skin and like my receding hairline and, you know, like being tall and skinny and like not in a good way, not in, not in a good way. I, like you're making this face like- What, you're gonna, Chad? You're making this face you're like- really, Fuck you, Chad. <laughs> you're making this face like- You're gonna like, really need the, the video for this episode. If you haven't tuned in on uh, the YouTube channel, this is mostly just visual expression okay. from here on out. Um, well, <laughs> this is just me and Allison well, reacting Chad, horrifyingly about Chad's beautiful skin, date, you, perfect, perfect hair, hair like, gorgeous girl. smile. But dating in New York. Beautiful skin. Dating in New York. Oh yeah, of course. Dating, I mean, it's so difficult to like, I think I present really well in like photos and like on camera, but then like you get in front of these guys and then it's like, all I can see is like my receding hairline in the reflection of the mirror, like behind him. Or like, I'm like dealing with being able to afford doing all the things that I couldn't you know, in my twenties. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm thinking yeah. about getting Invisalign and like fixing the, Ooh, we can talk that about I, that. like, and I, you've mentioned that Allison, like on your show, like that you have it. So yeah. it's like, how do I start dating again and realizing like, I am in a great place and I am like emotionally ready to do this, but I'm still like that chubby eighth grader in, you know, middle school. And like, how do I move forward from that? Yeah. Well, Chad, you're hot. I uh, not to objectify you to the listeners at home, but you are objectively attractive. You are like very, yeah, very nobody hot. can see this, but Chad's but, hot. So, <laughs> um, but I, you know, I feel like I, when I was dating, and I absolutely experienced this and experience it now, even though I'm not dating, just like in other ways. I think about when I see a person on the street, and I'm like, they're hot. And they're so attractive. And very rarely is it because they are perfect or flawless. They just have like an energy about them. And that energy is most likely confidence, something that eludes me still. Um, but I think that like reframing what it is going to take for you to feel attractive and like understanding that also the right person who's going to want to spend their time with you, their week with you, their month with you, their life with you is going to like need to not actually not to say that they won't like appreciate your aesthetic that you've obviously cultivated and very handsome but like 
not to be cheesy, but like it's what's on the inside that counts. But that's so true. And I think that like the right person, like I think it would be probably pretty devastating to you if you found out the person you were dating was only with you because you're hot. And mm. like there's so much to be said for why people find others attractive. And I honestly think that very rarely is it like the physical aesthetic. And because we aren't a photo, we are a moving, living, breathing person who moves through the world. And like, there's just like something about people. And like, that's the case, I think, for even like, if you, I think people are so obsessed with like celebrity culture and X, Y, and Z, but there are a lot of people that are, you know, in movies and on TV that are like beguiling. And you're like, there's something about them, but they're not like conventionally attractive or they're this or they're that, but they have something about them that makes you want to be around them. It makes you want to like, be in their world makes you want to spend time with them and get to know them and I feel like that everybody should focus on cultivating that more than like that that said I did get Invisalign and I love it you have to tell me (laughs) everything about it because I'm so like invested in doing it but then I'm like so nervous about the little chiclets on the front of my teeth and well they don't always go on the front of your teeth I, I don't have my trays in right now but I only have the chiclets on the left sides and right sides and the bottom sides I don't have any in the front of my teeth um but it is an adjustment but I've only had mine for three and a half months and already my mouth looks totally different but it, it really I had depends chiclets on absolutely teeth. everywhere and it's you totally did. fine okay. yeah they were there were chiclets on the front of my teeth they were everywhere I don't regret it it's where great. did you have how long did you have Invisalign just three months before I got married to mm-hmm. my tall mm-hmm. skinny husband yeah. <laughs> yeah, who I, I like- think is very hot oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. Also like the tall skinny part. It's like, I don't know. I feel like if you're like trying to fit into a mold of like, who are you trying to be with that is like looking for somebody other than you, you know, don't you want somebody who's like, I just want somebody who's tall and like, you know, with like a gorgeous head of hair and glowing skin and cheekbones like an angel. I mean, I just, I think also that whenever I talk to single people, I remember these like last moments of my single days and I would lie on the like chaise part of my couch and look out the window and be like, you know what? You better fucking enjoy this because at some point it's going to be over and there's just always going to be somebody at your house. Right. And now there is always somebody <laughs> at my fucking house. There's two people at your house. One of them is a there's baby. T- one of them is a baby. There's just always somebody at my house. And it's amazing. And it's the thing that we're all after. And there's this thing that we need to partner up in order to be happy. But you can be so happy and enjoy your time with yourself and value this transition that you've gone through and all the work you've done on yourself and and be proud of that and like live within that and not put the pressure on yourself to also solve something by having a boyfriend or a partner or like anybody do you know what I'm saying right yeah it's like it's like it's not some sort of a solve what you're looking for isn't like you know the emerald city and when it seems like everybody who has it has that and it's because what you have is already so much and if everything that you've that you've been doing and and being back in the city like just enjoy it because I'm fucking telling you when it's over it's over forever <laughs> you'll never be alone again and I don't mean that in a good way and not in a good way and are like, you- I literally yeah the last time I saw Allison in person my husband had to go to Canada without me with my son and I stayed back for numerous reasons for a couple of days and I was alone in the apartment and I just was like sucking on the walls I was so happy just to be by myself that's not to say I don't love my life I don't love having a partnership like it's it's you know I I'm so happy but it it this part of this this chapter that you're in is temporary and and being happy with yourself and everything you've done is going to just fill your cup even more and the fuller your cup is the better prepared you'll be for when you meet that person which you will yeah I also think that, like, are you looking for a long-term partnership or are you just sort of looking to get your own je ne sais quoi back for yourself? Uh, I hate dating. It's exhausting uh, and it's expensive. And so, like, yeah. I, I, I'm i more of a long-term monogamous kind of person, which is also kind of difficult in the city. It's like there's always someone younger. There's always someone hotter. There's always someone who has more money. And it's like there's also that and it's like I don't know yeah. I have to say I don't agree I, in New York I think if you frame it that way that it's hard in New York absolutely everybody's here it's like there's just a cornucopia of so many people out there and you could trip and meet that person after this podcast 
like on the street. Yeah. It's it, it's just saying yes to stuff and being out there. I don't think it's as hard in New York as you think it is. I think online is a nightmare. Are you online? I am. Yeah. Are you online? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on the, <laughs> Are you on the World Wide Web? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I'm I, just. I want to cheerlead you because I really think it's. I I do think it's easier and not easier. Dating is in it in essence hard, but there's just so much out there. It it's is almost true. like too many options. But you're both right. You're, you're both right. But I also think that like, if there's a person that is looking at you and you're like, you're not rich enough. You're not young enough. You're not hot enough. You're not this enough. Like mm-hmm. chances are, like I can't believe. I I can't imagine you being like that was the one for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. he sounds you know, like if somebody like, said that to me, I'd be like, "You're an asshole." But then, yeah, like, exactly. But then so I'm like, like, but then I'm like, but I want you to want me. Sure, everybody wants to feel desired. Okay. Everybody wants to feel hot. Everybody wants to feel like they're being flirted with. Everybody wants to feel like they are the thing that somebody else wants. Yeah. And like that can be especially hard online because people are so aloof and so indifferent. And like. You know, I think the best way to achieve that is like going out, going dancing, going to, like into like a real life situation where people are more want to like have a sort of like eye catching moment and like somebody you're like, oh, that person was looking at me. And like that can sometimes carry you through the week right. to be like that person who I'm not interested in was looking at me. <laughs> I'm hot, you know, and it, it can be like it's so exhausting when people are like, you're enough and like you don't need a person. It's like, well, of course we know that. But like it is in human nature to want to be desired and to want to be thought of as like a sexual yeah. person. And, you know, they, they don't want to be like pick last for kickball. Like, you know, I, and I totally get that. So you're saying I can, I can feel this way, but I, if I want to get Invisalign, I can still do it for myself. Yeah. I think that it's a moving target. I, I think that, but I think that like, if you're like, if only my teeth were straight, then somebody would want to hit on me at the bar. If only I did something with my hair, then somebody would want to date me. Like, that's just not true. Yeah, that's and a slippery slope. It's a really slippery I also, slope. And I know a ton of hot people that are totally single because they're not that cool, if I'm being yeah. honest. <laughs> also, I just want to say about Invisalign, I don't want them to sue, them, sue me. I said I wouldn't go back. I actually sort of wish I hadn't done it because, like, the nubbins <laughs> are a pain in the ass. Getting the nubbins off sucks. My teeth were not that crooked to begin with. I did it because it was pandemic, and I was like, nobody sees me anyway. Let me crack this out. And honestly, like, it's fine. Now I have to wear the trays at night and it makes me like, you know, not sexy in the evening. And like, I read a book and I go to bed. Like, I, I don't know. It is true. I, that they're the of, least I'm... hot thing a person can do at night. Just put your Invisalign Yeah, you're not about to like have spontaneous sex with your Invisalign trays in. Yeah. So I don't know. And I started to like roll over subtly good. and like I'll pop them out and then like pop back <laughs> So over. you're telling me there's a yeah. whole technique of being sexy in Invisalign. Oh yeah, you gotta them. like, you like casually like mm-hmm. lean over to the side of the bed that that they're not uh, on uh, and then like pop them out a little elegantly and like put them on the nightside table and hope that you don't lose them because they're clear and who knows where they go and oh, it's Christ. it is a whole thing but the reason I did it was because I asked everybody I know that did it and every single person Helena you are the first person to say that I didn't like it every single person was like this is the best thing I ever did and there you have it but it's it's really there's also it's not permanent it's like if you hate them Get them off. But I also just want to say that, like, to your thing about beauty standards and everything being impossible, I agree with that 100%. Chad, I think your teeth look amazing. You've smiled several times on this call. If it's something you don't want to deal with right now, don't deal with it right now. Yeah. Like, just don't even put it on your plate. Enjoy your sexy fall. <laughs> enjoy my sexy yeah, fall. enjoy it. Just be like, it's going to be really unsexy if I'm trying to have spontaneous sex to, like, yeah, and keep it's track like, of And we, right as now. with experience with spontaneous Invisalign sex, can tell you it's, mm-hmm. you know... It throws a wrench. It's not good. It does. No, it's definitely <laughs> yeah. the least sexy thing that you can do in that instance. All right. Um, but yeah, I, I think that like everybody has that. And I'm like a huge, I, I mean, I'm basically regurgitating advice that I've received from my friends when I'm like, if I lost five to 10 pounds, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, do you think you'd be like a happier person? I'm like, no, I'm like riddled with anxiety and self-doubt. That's not going to all of a sudden like vanish because I lost five to 10 pounds. Like I am who I am and I need to go to therapy and like deal with that and deal with why I don't feel like I'm enough with or without that. And like, then if I lose my pounds, I'm great. Yeah. But, 
It's not I got some my advice problems. once that I've never forgotten from Russell Tovey, not to name drop, but he's a sexy example. <laughs> and I was like dealing with anxiety and like. Wait, I don't know fr- who that ver- is. I don't either. He's an actor. Oh, okay. Oh, he's a gorgeous gay actor. Look him up. Anyways, so, uh, well, useless name drop, apparently. <laughs> an absolute fumble on the ball. No, Wanted to sound fancy. Listen and be like, that's cool. <laughs> it's just, I'm not very plugged in, so it's fine. Um, but the advice was, and I was like freaking out about a relationship I was in and always like wondering what was going on, super insecure, just like running my brain. And he just gave me the advice to like lean on my back foot. Like if you're front footing everything and being like, I got to get out there, I got to date, blah, 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 it's going to put you in this state of mind that is not conducive to that or to yourself and to your own rhythm. And if you just sort of like, hang on the back foot of it and do like Allison said, like go out and enjoy your life and your things and stuff will just fall into place in ways that you didn't expect and from places you didn't expect. That's great. I love the back footing thing. I think that's yeah. A yeah. Just somebody had told leaning me that. on that back foot. That's smart. Great. And also thirst traps work. <laughs> I was, I was actually like the lighting today is like so good. And I, and I was like, maybe I should take a, a photo before this whole thing yeah starts. just be like be like recording an important podcast <laughs> like yeah. the lights give it you know like just yeah like you look hot like yeah when you feel you... yourself people feel that so great well thank yeah. you both so much i really appreciate it um thank you chad you're perfect you're perfect you're so perfect chad have a good day thanks bye guys i had a conversation with a very successful friend of mine um, and it's interesting, like now that we're sorry to age us approaching 40, <laughs> uh, people like this friend, like yourself, just have the success that's so amazing and that you continue to build on. And it's like, we're, we spend so much time in our twenties and early thirties, like pushing, pushing, pushing and wanting to have success. And like, you know, where is, like I said, that like, you know, Emerald city, like, when are we going to get there? And sometimes, and then finally now being like, wait a minute, don't I have much of what I was looking yeah. for? Can't you give yourself a bit of a break? Yeah. Like, Somebody's like, what would it take for you to feel like you were successful? And I was like, I don't know. And I don't appreciate the question. <laughs> please don't ask me that. <laughs> I feel attacked and I don't like it. So please never ask me that again. Um, but it's tough. It's really tough. I know. It's I also tough. It's it also not time. tough. It's like, who cares? I don't know. Lighten up everybody, myself included. Yeah, I know. I would really benefit from listening to a lot of my own advice. <laughs> oh, yeah, big time. We're going to have to l- listen to these tapes, as it were, um, <laughs> and figure that out. I, I mean, I think that's part of this podcast, too, is like the, not the irony, but like the funny part for me is that like I really do love to give advice and I am horrible at taking it. And like I totally understand like cerebrally and and intellectually like the advice that I'm giving but it is very difficult to internalize where you're like you are enough and I'm like I'm not enough (laughs) like Mm -hmm. no you're enough but like I'm not enough you know it's very it's you know do as I say not as I do Ooh, chef's kiss okay so these okay so not so secretly my favorite part of the podcast this is chef's kiss this is I I attempted to have this be like a newsletter column, but it was becoming too like, uh, I was spending too much time on it because I was like getting all like writery. And I was like, these questions don't need to be a dissertation. They need to be like, like rapid sort of quick answers, gut check, keep it moving, et cetera. Um, and I love these types of questions because you know, the sort of impetus for this whole show actually is like, if you have a question, chances are somebody else has a question too. Hi, Allison. This is Rebecca Gowali. I'm calling from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Long-time listener, first-time caller. And um, I was just calling because I moved down to Baton Rouge, and the weather here I can only explain as a hot, swampy soup. It is so incredibly hot and humid. And ever since moving here, especially when I bake, I have found my recipes to be, for lack of better words, floopy. I was wondering if you had any advice on how humidity affects following recipes I'm used to following and what I should do to combat the humidity when I'm cooking. Thank you. And I'm so glad you have a podcast. Oh, I've, I've been like dying to hear like first time, first time caller, long time listener. That's like 
the holy grail of all podcasts or radio shows. Um, <laughs> when you take a baked good out of the oven, like a cake or something, like it's immediately going to get that like glossy, sticky, sort of saggy film. I, unrelated, was eating a box of Cheez-Its the other day and opened them. And then the next day they were too stale to eat because the humidity had gotten to them. Like there's just certain things the weather is going to ruin for you and food sometimes is one of them. But anything that's like crispy or crunchy or brown is like... You're really, it's a real uphill battle. Helena's only from temperate climates, so she doesn't, can't wait. No, I don't have something to say on this because I, I find baking so challenging. I think it's like, I think also the other thing with moving, regardless of the climate, is learning your oven. I, I That's yeah. the only advice I have is like, when I moved to my new apartment, I was like, what the fuck is this oven? It is so hot. Yeah. Um. So finding, and like you find balance on all your recipes based on, on like changing elements but I guess what I would say too is like I think what's so great about some of your recipes especially in sweet enough is that you're not asking people to bake all the time especially on like a humid day there's like other things that they can do in that book that isn't necessarily baking yeah that said if you love to bake I would just say crank get a dehumidifier is that insane I mean I know a lot of people that live in these places they get these dehumidifiers and oh yeah I would I think that feels like a non-negotiable yeah, I feel like you should if you're going to move to Baton Rouge. Yeah, get your get yourself a dehumidifier and empty it regularly. <laughs> yeah. That's a good um, that's good advice about the oven. I feel like more than the weather, it's probably your oven. Um yeah. which is like it's going to take a few bakes as it were to kind of get the rhythm. Okay, next caller. Hi there, I'm Eddie. And I was wondering, um do you have any advice on what to do with extra egg yolks i have this recipe that i often make uh that's delicious but yields two egg yolks and i often end up just throwing them out so let me know what you think thank you normally people are trying to get rid of their egg whites not necessarily their egg yolks but i feel like if i had extra egg yolks i mean one thing you can do is you can freeze them until you have enough to do something like make a custard if that's your bag, if you're like, oh, yes, I, that interests me. Otherwise, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, if you were really into omelets <laughs> or like eggs in the morning, you can always add them to, you know, a whole egg or whatever and like do your thing that way. And they'll come out like very beautiful and vibrant. Um, I also really actually love eating a raw egg yolk in things like stews and soups. Or you can have it on top of like steamed rice or something like that is actually really nice. But I don't know if it's worth like saving the egg yolk for. It's more like I would maybe save it in its shell and then eat it a few hours later. But I just, I worry about them like hanging out in the fridge too long, you know? Yeah. If anything, you could just save them the next day and combine them with a bunch of other full eggs and have like very delicious scrambled eggs that were just super yolky. I don't know. I'm always, I'm bad. Like I throw them away, but it's a very timely question based on inflation and the cost of eggs. Yeah, exactly. I think if you're like, oh, I do this recipe where I'm left with two egg yolks all the time, then like in three days you might have enough to do something significant with them. But I kind of agree. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I, I would, I would, I don't know. Next time you have a a spare egg yolk, just like make yourself some eggs and eat them with that. So you're sort of like not saving it. I find that once we start saving things, when people are like, you can save your fennel stems in the fridge. It's like, okay, well, once you do that, they're going to probably go bad because you're not going to remember that you did that. And it's a really nice thought. But unless you're making chicken stock or vegetable stock that day, I'm sort of like either freeze it or keep it moving, you know? I also want to just say with egg yolks broadly, I think there's been this war on egg yolks and everybody's buying these like cartons of just egg whites. And I, this has got to end. It's disgusting. Like, what are you really saving yourself by not eating the yolk? They're like fat. You're like, well, fat's good for you. I don't understand that. It's omega three. That's been driving me crazy. I don't know. I'm not a doctor or nutritionist, but I am an egg lover. Egg white. Yeah. Egg white only omelet. Like absolutely not. Get out of here with that. I do eat, I do get an egg white omelet when I get room service if I'm on a business trip, which makes me sound Why? like I work for a bank or something, but that's um, so interesting. I know. Hi. And it, I don't know. It was like, I had a regular omelet from like when I was on book tour, I would forget what hotel I was in. And it was like, so br- like the egg was really brown and oh, yeah. I didn't like the yolk being browned, but I love a crispy brown egg white. And so I was like, maybe mm. 
if I do egg white omelet, it will, if it's brown, I won't mind. And I don't. You're basically like what weird... you're saying is that nobody actually knows how to make an omelet because I don't trust anybody else. I'm only going to let them make me an egg white omelet. Yeah. Egg whites are bust for my <laughs> omelet because I love yeah. a crispy egg white. I just do. It's fantastic food. Um, okay. Next Good caller. One. Hi, Allison. Um, this is Gigi. I'm calling from San Francisco, and my husband and I are going to a wedding soon where we don't know a ton of other people or other guests. Um, so I was wondering if you have any recommendations of how to maybe kind of have the best time. Should we, like, hang by the raw bar? Should we be, like, super outgoing? I'm a little introverted, um, but I feel like it would be fun to try to meet people. Um, so let me know if you have any advice for making the most of an event where you don't know a lot of folks, but you want to have a good time. Um, yeah, looking forward to, to hearing your thoughts. Thank you. Bye. Amazing question, um, especially because Helena and I both have recently gone to weddings where we didn't know anybody. Not together, but she went to a wedding. I went to a wedding. We um, did. I feel <laughs> hanging out by the raw bar, yes. Like, not... <laughs> Not to be like drink a lot because maybe you don't drink or maybe that's like not your thing, but I do think that there is a time and a place to be like, we are playing versions of ourselves, like you and your husband or you and your friend, or even if you're just flying solo, you get to be whoever you want to be. Nobody knows you here. Nobody has a preconceived notion. Nobody has, nobody's imprinting on you what they think they know about you or what they remember about you because they don't know you. You get to be whoever you want to be. And that is really liberating. Yeah, I would also say that you you do know somebody there, and that's your husband. So you're with your partner. You're going to a wedding. You presumably like hanging out with them. Um, so in my recent experience, it was just like we enjoyed food. We enjoyed free drinks, and we people watched and laughed together. Um, I will say you do run the risk of getting stuck in a conversation with somebody you don't necessarily want to be talking to mm -hmm. for a long period of time, but that in itself is kind of interesting and something that you two together talk about. I think of it as like a couple's adventure. And then it's a wedding. You're going to meet people sort of regardless. Yeah. You kind of have like the attitude also of just like the, <laughs> the wedding that we just left a few weeks ago, the person that we had like we had like spent a considerable amount of time with over like two and a half days. She was like, well, have a nice life. And we were, and like, didn't mean it in a negative way, but we were like, yeah, we are never going to see this lady again. Like we're just I literally not. had this exact same thing happen. And I wish she had acknowledged that. Like yeah. I was at this wedding, I met this girl and she's at, and, and I'm like, I think that's it. I think this was a fun night and it's never not forever. Yeah. And that's okay. She's not going to be my Allison Roman. <laughs> no. And they, right. they can't all be frankly, <laughs> but it's, it's really kind of nice to be like, Oh, we're, we can like have a good time and you can be whatever version of yourself you want. And like, I did it in a way where I was like, I'm going to be fun. I'm going to have, I'm going to dance, even though sometimes I feel shy about dancing at a wedding or I'm going to do this. And you know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to go to sleep early and I'm not going to go Oof. to the after party because I don't know these people. And also, I was like, I that's play, okay. I didn't feel pressure, I guess is what I'm saying. I think that's smart. And I also want to say, because she said she was introverted, I oftentimes when I'm in a conversation with somebody I don't know, I just kind of play a game about, I ask as many questions as I can and I just oh, learn yeah. about them. Yeah. And I sort of find it funny when they don't ask anything about you back. And that's something I laugh about with my husband later mm -hmm. <laughs> when people are like determined not to have a cir circle conversation. Um, but yeah, you yeah learn a lot it's about like people. you learn a lot about people for yeah. sure. It's really fun. But yeah, I do think the asking questions of people, but you, I think also very quickly identify in a group of individuals who are your people. Like mm -hmm. Max and I like immediately were like, oh, these are our people. Like we want to talk to you. We want to hang out with you. And every time there was like a setting where the people were dispersed, we kind of found them and just like, you just you kind of gel. It's like a lot more obvious than you think. And to your point, if it's, if there's nobody and none of these people are your people, you're with your partner and you guys are going to have a really good time and you're going to laugh about how weird it was. Hi, this is Erin. I'm with a group of girls in upstate New York and we have one really important question. Fuck, Mary kill, dill, lemon, tinfish. Thanks. Okay. Fuck, Mary kill, lemon, dill, parsley. I would. Did she say tin fish? 
Oh yeah, fish. lemon dill tin fish. Yeah. I would fuck dill. I would marry lemon. I would kill tin fish. Oh wow. Yeah. I would. Oh my god. I would fuck tin fish. Wait, this is hard. I know. This yeah. is journalism. I think I'd. I think I'd fuck tin fish. I'd marry. No, but I wouldn't kill lemon. You can't kill You're lemon. Right, you I gotta can... marry lemon. That's like the that's the yeah, only truth you... thing. I could no, you I could easily marry... kill dill and fuck tin fish, but I would but you have to marry lemon. That's I guess that you're right. I would marry lemon, I'd fuck dill and I would No, no, I would marry lemon, I'd I'd fuck tin fish and I would kill dill. This is that's rough. I know. That's tough. I mean, I could see both. I could see both realities playing out, but I think that like ride or die lemon is a non-negotiable for me and that's you know what marriage is I think I think because of Alice and Roman I understood why people buy full bags of lemons like I have oh, a yeah. full bag. somebody comes over with one lemon I'm like do you have any lemons They're like I have one I'm like well that's not going to get us anywhere one no, lemon I, you, I need multiple lemons uh, and on every dish now my squeezer yeah. is like flaking away because yeah you gotta Alice chop it you gotta fry it you gotta roast it you gotta preserve it you gotta salt it you gotta it's like it is me I am it we are lemon we're married. Do you know what it, you know what you use lemon in that is such a good recipe is your chicken piccata. That's a great use of mm, lemon. Thank you. That's a good recipe. It's, because not only do you saute with the lemon, you also add the other uh, separate slices at the end so you get the like really cooked down lemon plus the fresh zestness of the fresh yeah. lemon. It's a very Some people good use don't of like lemon. it. They think it's too bitter. And I'm like, you know, oh, that's no. what the, that's the lesson the lemon's trying to teach you. You know? So I I'd be remiss if I didn't include a little phone number for people who want to call in and uh, perhaps ask your own question. And that phone number is a totally nonsensical, don't try to make a word out of it, 856-502-4816. Or go to allisoneroman.com slash podcast, where there'll be a myriad of options for you to either call in or write in or other ways to ask your question. So we hope to hear from you. We can't do the show without you. Helena, thank you so, oh. so much for being our guest. You you have added so much. You are so brilliant and emotionally intelligent. And I'm the world is lucky to have a small sliver of you. Just like a sprig of dill. That's right, which we're going to kill, apparently. <laughs> I hope uh, shit, no! <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Maker's Mark. Solicited advice is hosted by me, Allison Roman. Our podcast is produced by Jennifer Sullivan with the help of Elena Rodriguez Villa. Technical production and editing is handled by Red Rock Music. And our theme music was created by Yosef Monroe. And for questions, sponsorship inquiries, or anything else, please visit us at allisoneroman.com slash podcast. <laughs>